Hello world, Southern Indiana Sawmill here. This video is gonna talk about should you buy a used sawmill or not. Behind me here, I have my newly used uh, 1999 Woodmiser LT40 standard hydraulic uh, diesel sawmill. And I got this sawmill a couple months ago and when I got it, I realized that there was gonna be some things that I would have to fix on it, but I didn't realize exactly how much I was gonna have to fix on it. And so I'm gonna read a short list for you right now telling you everything that I've had to fix on this machine and there will be pictures or explanations of everything that I've done to this. Almost a solid two pages of things that I fixed. All right, hold on to your seats, here we go. First, it has two new tires and one new rim. While I was taking it home, one of the tires blew up. I got about 10 miles down the road and the tire blew up on the freeway. Led to a very horrible night having to have the uh, sawmill uh, towed up onto a tow truck, taken to a repair shop and having it fixed. Um, and so that was the very first thing that ever happened on the way home. Uh, and that's probably when I should have known that there was gonna be more things that were gonna happen with this. Uh, as the previous owner told me that it already had two new tires on it. Well, they might've been new, but they sat in that barn for a good number of years, dry rotted and exploded. All right, fuel shut off solenoid, glow plug relay and relay fuse. Replace the coolant overflow tank for radiator. The old one was cracked. I added two side supports for the logs. I added front and rear fine adjust outriggers. I replaced uh, the two side riggers. The old ones had some sort of weird rigging on them. I think they went to tractor supply and just uh, welded on uh, these sort of makeshift outriggers on there. I have no idea uh, still why they did that, but. It's got the factory ones on there now. I did install a brand new simple set on this machine uh, and you can go back and watch the video where I show how I installed that simple set on there. It's working great. While I was installing the new simple set, I realized that it needed a new up down motor and then that also led to a new drive pulley. Um, I cleaned and refurbished the mast rails. I replaced the wear pads on the mast rails. Um, those do wear down. I think they're made out of nylon and um, they they come to you about a half inch thick, but they do wear down over time, so it's important to replace those. These ones were completely down to the point where the metal was actually wearing on the mast, and so it was a good thing that I got to that and replaced that. Um, I did add a new starter solenoid uh, to the machine, and I cleaned the fuse box. I replaced the debarker solenoid. Um, what was happening with the machine, and this is inside of the control box, is that when you would turn the machine on, the debarker would just start running all by itself. And if you turn it off, it would just continue running and it would never turn off. And the reason was the solenoid was old. Um, it was stuck in the open position. So it was sending a signal and the debarker just ran constant. Um, so what you would have to do is wait for the fuse to trip or unplug the battery um, in order to get it to start uh, stop going. So that's what happened there. I cleaned the inside of the control box, which you can see right there. And when I had taken it apart and got in there, I found a mouse nest and I found this uh, teeny tiny dead baby mouse that was inside of there. So it was really gross, it smelled really bad. Um, I got it all cleaned out and good to go. Um, it basically sat around and just uh, was at the whims of nature for a good couple of years, I think. Um, I rebuilt the hydraulic blade tensioner. I lubed and unstuck the chrome rods for the uh, idle wheel tensioner. And I added a half inch steel ball that goes in that tensioner. Uh, it would be hard to explain where this goes, but uh, there's a screw in the tensioner and behind that screw is a little steel ball. And that is sort of what creates a pressure point between two hard metal surfaces. Um, and so that ball wasn't even in there when I'd gotten into it. And so I replaced that steel ball. I added two new blade guide rollers. One of the old ones was seized, one of them was okay. I added the dust cover, um, which also lubricates the rail. It was not even on this machine. And so I ordered one of those. That's good to go and replaced. The battery cover on this is a metal shroud and um, it was all bent out of shape. I don't know what in the world happened, but I took some hammers to it and uh, some straight edges and just banged it out and got it to where now it's uh, on there and doing its job. I did replace the battery terminals. Both of the battery terminals look like they've been hit with a hammer about 10,000 times. Again, I don't know why that would be the case, but I did replace both of the new battery terminals. Um, brand new dust extraction chute. If anything else for appearances, the old one uh, was pretty worn out. Brand new fuel tank on this machine. The old one was like off of a, a boat or something like that. It was a little tiny thing and they had rigged it up so that it would work. I replaced the fuel hose going from the fuel tank uh, up to the engine. That was, it looked to be old and I didn't want a chance it, so I replaced that. Uh, brand new water tank on the machine. The old one was cracked. Um, so that also has brand new uh, hardware on there for the, fuel, for the water tank. Um, I replaced the hydraulic contact strip and the plastic housing. The plastic housing 
I had been taken off before and was cracked and so I replaced that with brand new plastic and replaced the copper contact strip that engages the hydraulics for the wood miser. I replaced the auto clutch switch. Um, the old auto clutch switch was a different kind of switch. It wasn't, it wasn't for the auto clutch function and so I had replaced that, which also means that when I got into the machine, realized that the uh, the auto clutch wasn't working there's a program computer in there called the MOF set and that MOF set needed to be replaced thankfully the old owner already had a MOF set and so I replaced the MOF set but once I got that replaced I also realized um, that the uh, sensor switches for the auto clutch was not working so it got two new sensors with that as well um, I replaced the old hour meter um, it had a different kind of uh, meter on there and it stuck somewhere around 1700 hours. So there's no way to know exactly how many hours are on this machine, um, but I replaced that. Woodmiser has upgraded that to a new digital version, uh, which I think is a lot nicer from the old one. Um, tightened the mounting bolts in the alternator. The bolts just weren't even tightened on the alternator, so it was just kind of flopping around in there. Very odd, I know. Um, and I found a new bolt that goes in the air filter. It was all zip tied on there before and so now it looks like it's supposed to look. Greased all fittings, lubed all moving parts. Um, I power washed the entire sawmill to get all of the old like so it sat in a barn and this guy was uh, a rancher. He had a whole bunch of cows and the cows would come and basically you know do their business all over the sawmill and so there was just uh, a smell to it. There was a look to it. I got the whole thing power washed and cleaned off so it's good to go. And to top it all off, I purchased one wood miser hat. <laughs> so you all are probably going to want to know what did I pay for this mill and what have I put into it to get it completely and totally working. All right, full transparency. Are you ready? All right, so I put $14,500 to actually buy the mill and I have put $3,884.48 to get it to where it is at right now, which is a fully functioning machine. Now, had I known everything that was going to go into this mill, I probably would have went in and asked for the mill somewhere around $10,000 or $11,000. Now, here's the thing. This mill, even in its age and faded paint condition, basically restored to the condition which it is now, you could still sell for around eighteen dollars or $19,000. And again, it's worth what someone is willing to pay for it. But these old diesels that run like this are a little bit more valuable than the gas powered ones or the electric ones. Um, and it is a fully functioning machine. And so um, I could still technically, if I, if I had to, get out of this one and break even or maybe even make, you know, a few hundred dollars off of it. Now I have zero intention of selling this machine. Um, this is mine. <laughs> it's running great now. But this leads to a question. Is it worth buying a used sawmill? Well, let's go ahead and try to answer that. Should you buy a used sawmill? One of the very first things you're gonna to wanna to consider, and I have, a, I have a, a few things that I wanna share, but the first thing you wanna consider is simple, and that is just the mechanical function of the machine. How does it actually run? Now here's something that's very important that I have to tell you specifically about wood misers. Do not look at the color of paint as an indicator if, if that machine runs or not. In the older models, Woodmiser had a real problem with the paint fading. If the machine sat outside or was exposed to sunlight a lot, the paint probably faded on it. That is not an indicator of how worn the machine is. The things that you want to look at are like the top and bottom guide rails of the machine. Are they all worn off and not rounded anymore? If they're really flat, then it's a sign that it's been run back and forth a lot. Um, what does the contact strip look like? What does the control box look like? Are the buttons all worn off? Is there indications that the machine has been used more than what the hour indicator says, just like my machine did? Look at, the, look at the mast rail pads. Are they really worn down? And most importantly, listen to the engine. Most of the wood misers that are out there, uh, they don't have diesel engines. Most of them are gas powered. And so if you're not familiar with what a good gas powered engine is supposed to sound like, here's a tip. If you have a buddy that knows how to fix riding lawn mowers or any mower or has worked on small engines, bring that person with you and they can tell you if it sounds like what it's supposed to sound like. If you have no idea, um, then, then be better safe than sorry and buy yourself a newer machine that probably 
does not have as many hours on it that will run good. But if you're looking at a higher hour machine, there's several things that you'll want to look at to make sure that it's going to run right. And so should you buy a used mill, the first thing is what does the mechanical function of the machine look like? If it's possible, make sure that you're able to cut a log on the machine um, before you buy it. And you will know right away, does the machine cut square? Is there going to be work doing alignment issues? How do things uh, function? And you know, if, if you're not comfortable cutting, then let the person that, that has owned the machine cut the log for you. And you'll be able to tell right away, you know, how much do they have to fidget with it to get it to work. Um, watch, watch the saw head go up and down. Is there weird jumps in it when it's going up and down? Again, all these things can be fixed. But the question is, what are you looking at? Are you looking at a couple small fixes or are you looking at a full-blown restoration? Now, there's nothing wrong with a full-blown restoration, but you have to get it for the right price. Don't be like me. <laughs> get your mill at the right price if you know it's going to be more of a full-blown restoration. Second point, which goes kind of along with the first point, is this. What price are you willing to pay for a used sawmill? Here's the thing about sawmills, oddly enough. They seem to retain their value pretty well. And if you're watching this video, there's a good chance that you're considering a used sawmill and you've started looking around and you've realized that these things might cost a little more than what you originally thought they were going to cost. For example, as I said earlier in the video, this is a 1999 Woodmiser LT40 standard hydraulic diesel. What adds value to this machine that would make it cost more than, say, other machines? Well, first of all, some people really do prize the older Woodmisers. There's a rumor out there that Woodmiser used to use heavier gauge steel in their machines. I don't know if that's true or not, but it's a rumor that I've heard. Okay, I'm not going to validate that, but I've heard it. The other thing that makes this machine more valuable is that it has hydraulics on it, and the hydraulics work. Third thing that makes it more valuable, this has a diesel engine on it. Uh, you can get the gas engines on these things for a third or half of the price of the diesel engines, and the diesel engines do run and outlast any gas engine on the planet. And so those are the things that make this one more valuable. Also, as you can see directly behind me, this box right here is the control panel, and it has a brand new simple set installed on it. And so the computer makes it more expensive. If it had the Accu set, it would be worth even more. So all of those are things to consider when you're looking at price. Now let me tell you some advice that I received when I very first uh, was considering getting into sawmilling it had to do with the hydraulics on the machine. Now if you have equipment that can move the logs around and you have other people that can help you rotate most of the logs um, just with cant hooks and stuff like that, then you may not need a hydraulic machine, especially if you just plan on being stationary and not taking your mill around doing portable sawmill jobs. But if you are working alone or you are working with limited help. If you do not have all the machines to move this stuff around and continually set the, the logs on the bed, I'm telling you guys, most of you that have not done sawmilling work, you have no idea how heavy logs are yet. <laughs> you know, when you get your first uh, 25 inch hickory loaded up on your machine, you're gonna say, oh my gosh, if I only had hydraulics. And so think about that. Uh, the hydraulics are worth it. They make life livable to be able to rotate the log and move it around and not have to mess with it and wear out your body. Look guys, our bodies do wear down. Um, and I've realized this after about four years of doing different sawmill type work is that sawmilling can wear your body down fast and so you have to take care of yourself. One of the ways you take care of yourself is by having hydraulics on a mill. And so that's just one thing to consider. Um, again, there's nothing wrong with the non-hydraulic models. You just It's just going to be more effort getting everything turned. Third point I want to make, and guys, because this video is already getting a little longer than I want it to be, I'm just going to have the third point be the final point. And I'm sure that you can think of more. If you have more ideas, please go ahead and put them in the comments box below. But here's the third point, and it's really more philosophical. Where do you find your enjoyment from? And where do you find degrees of satisfaction of accomplishment in your life from? There's something special about working with your hands. And any of you in the fields of blue collar trades know this. Um, no matter what you do, it's always encouraging when you can start something at the beginning of the day and see the result at the end of the day. And at the end of the day, it really is satisfying. And it's really uh, encouraging to be able to use your uh, life in this way to do something and be satisfied doing it. It's simple. I know for some of you uh, it might sound crazy, 
but it's not crazy to me. It's a satisfying experience to be able to work with your hands and find satisfaction in it. And so that might be a reason that you would consider getting a mill, is that you've never done anything like this before in your life, but boy, you're, you're really looking um, for another sense of purpose in your life. And this could be one of those niches that really helps develop skills in you that you didn't even know that you had. And so that's the third reason that I'm gonna put in there is just finding satisfaction and finding pleasure in other things in your life. Guys, there's so much that could be said about this, um, about buying a used mill, and there's many different experiences out there of it. And I know we're gonna have some guys out there that say, well, just buy a brand new mill. Um, but again, not economical for everybody, right? <laughs> we all can't be dropping 35 or 40 or 50 grand on a machine overnight. Um, and a lot of us don't wanna be in financial debt. And so that's another possibly fourth reason, but let's just close it right there. Guys, thank you for watching. Um, if you've enjoyed this video, I have several other videos that are gonna pop up here at the end. And please, I encourage you to go ahead and watch some of these other videos. Support my channel by subscribing and by hitting the like button. Help me get more views. All right, gonna have a lot of videos from here on out. Got a few things going. I'm still building a barn, and so you're gonna see the process of that coming along. I'm waiting for some materials to come along, and I'm talking fast, so you better listen fast. Um, and then we're gonna start doing some sawmill videos. Hey! sawmill videos and so I know you all love those and they are coming folks so hold on to your seats here we go the old wood miser is ready to run